at church. Hey, I, uh, I failed to mention earlier, happy Father's Day. Didn't forget about you. I just failed to mention it. So, uh, oh, man, we can do a better job than that. There's some awesome, there's some awesome fathers in the house. Man, make them, show them some love. Show them some love. Show them some love. Show them some love. I want to invite you to turn to Hebrews chapter 11. We're continuing the series by faith through chapter 11 of Hebrews. Hebrews 11, we're uh, taking the summer and literally preaching verse by verse through this one chapter. We're looking at the great examples of faith and and how it would apply to our lives, how we can be challenged by these great examples to live a life by faith. And uh, and so we're in verse 4 today, Hebrews 11 Verse 4, Hebrews 11, verse 4. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was approved as a righteous man because God approved his gifts. And even though he is dead, he still speaks through his faith. He still speaks through his faith. Let's pray. Lord, once again, we we come before you asking that you would speak. Lord, if we don't hear from you, we're in trouble. God, we need to hear from you. We long to hear from you. We long to be changed by you. And so would you speak? May our ears and our, our hearts be open to you today. May all distractions just cease. And just for a moment... In the chaos of this world, may there be a calmness where we can hear from you. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. We're going to press in in three words. We're going to press in in these three words today. Be challenged by these three words today. And I pray that something starts today that would continue throughout the week. That this worship experience wouldn't just end, uh, start and end, uh, but that there would be a continuation. And so that the Spirit of God would just continue to speak to us even as well after we leave this place. And the three words that we're going to press in today uh, goes like this. Obedience condemns disobedience. Obedience condemns disobedience. Let's look back to verse 4 of Hebrews 11 to gain a better understanding of what what I mean by that. What do I mean by those three words? Obedience condemns disobedience. We see by faith, Abel offered. Turn to the person next to you and tell them that Abel offered. Abel offered. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Get involved a little bit. Get involved a little bit. Abel, Abel, he offered. This verb offered reflects an act of obedience. Do you see the word offered? The word offered there, I I circled it in my Bible. The word offered uh, uh, reflects an act of obedience. There's this act of obedience that comes from, from Abel's sacrifice. And so Abel did not simply just believe. He didn't just simply believe that a sacrifice would be acceptable. He accessed the divine blessing of God by means of obedience. There was an action there wasn't just this thought or this, this just belief. He just didn't leave it there. There was, a, there was something that followed. There was an action that followed. And we see Abel offered. Again, reflecting the act of obedience. Obedience condemns disobedience. We're going to take a little step further and, and actually look at Genesis 4. Genesis 4 is the biblical narrative of Cain and Abel. And we see in Genesis 4 how the story unfolds. And so verse 1 of chapter 4, Genesis is the first book of the Bible. Genesis chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, the man was intimate with his wife Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. She said, I have had a male child with the Lord's help. She also gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel became a shepherd of flocks, but Cain worked the ground. In the course of time, Cain presented some of the land's produce as an offering to the Lord. Verse 4, and Abel also presented an offering. Some of the firstborn of his flocks and their fat portions, the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. Verse 5, but he did not have regard for uh, for Cain and his offering. And Cain 
was furious. Cain was furious, and he looked despondent. Verse 6, then the Lord said to Cain, why are you so furious? Why do you look despondent? Verse 7, if you do what is right, won't you be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must rule over it. Verse 8, Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. And the question, the first question for us today is this, are you an Abel in your obedience or are you a Cain in your disobedience? Are you an Abel in your obedience or are you a Cain in your disobedience? So we, we see the, 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 the narrative here. We, we just read through Genesis chapter 4 how the story unfolds and we understand that Abel's a shepherd and Cain is a farmer. We understand that Cain is the older brother, Abel's a younger brother. And we understand that, that Abel brings a, an offering that's presentable to the Lord and, and Cain brings an offering that's not presentable to the Lord. We see that the Lord gives Cain an opportunity. You see it in, in chapter 4. The Lord gives gives Cain an opportunity to, to, to that, that hey, hey, you can make this thing right. You can make this thing right. And Cain ignores the word from the Lord. As so rather than obeying the Lord, he disobeys the Lord. And how does the story end? He, he, he goes and kills his brother. The anger, the bitterness had turned into anger. And the anger had control over him. And he goes out and kills his brother. And so are, are you an able... In your obedience, or are you a Cain in your disobedience? And only you can answer that today. Only you can personally answer that between the Lord today. Are you an Abel in your obedience, or are you Cain in your disobedience? And we're going to see here that obedience condemns disobedience. Why is that? Because the death of Abel... Uh, does, does not have the last word. We see according to Hebrews 11, 4, that Abel in his faith continues to speak. We're going to see that really just unfold here in just a moment. But it is commonly believed in the church that faith is merely just a willingness to accept facts regarding the Lord. And nothing can be further from the truth. Faith is not just a willingness to accept facts. It's not just a knowledge. It's not just a head knowledge. Faith is much more than that. Faith is not validated as faith until it responds in doing what God requires. There's an obedience factor that comes into play. We see that in James chapter 2, verse 18. I'd encourage you to write this reference down. James 2, verse 18 says, But someone will say, You have faith. And I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you faith by my works. There's a response. There's an obedience. Faith is not validated as faith until it responds in doing what God requires. Once again, let me say it like this. We understand salvation. We understand that Jesus came over 2,000 years ago. We understand that the Christmas narrative, let me Say it like that. We understand that Jesus came as an infant. He was born into this world. He grew up to be a man. We understand Easter. We celebrate Jesus being crucified on the cross, being placed in the grave, and rising again victorious from the grave. We, we understand all of that. We understand the gospel. But it's not until we surrender over to the lordship of Jesus that Jesus, your boss of my life, you are in charge of my life. My only hope is in you. I need you to forgive me. It's not until that action of surrender that it really becomes faith. The action verbs connected to the expression by faith, and if you take time to look through Hebrews Chapter 11, it's repeated over and over again, just in this verse alone, three different times. We see that it's the testimony of the nature of genuine faith. There was a response. There was obedience. It's not just good enough to see it and to hear it, but it's putting it into 
action, there's a response. And throughout Hebrews 11, as noble as these Old Testament characters are, right? As we, as we, as we study chapter 11 over the summer, we'll, we'll hear stories. You'll hear stories maybe you've never heard before. And it's like, man, you'll, you'll take a step back and it just will blow you away. The life lived by these Old Testament biblical and historical characters. Their faith in the living God. Their, their, their eyes are focused on the future then they take Jesus at his word, literally, and they're, they're believing for the Messiah. We're able to look back and say, man, the Messiah came. God has fulfilled his promise in sending Jesus the Messiah. These Old Testament characters are looking toward the future and the one day Messiah coming to provide the ultimate forgiveness of their sins. And as noble as these Old Testament characters are, it becomes clear that the by faith phrase is equivalent uh, of saying that the believer is saying this, I, I'm, I'm surrendering to the divine instruction of God. I, I, I'm surrendering over to the sovereignty of creator God. Uh, God, you rule my life. You rule my life starting this day. W.E. Vine observed that Abel's by faith sacrifice was based on revelation which God had made. Vine's observing that Abel's by faith testimony comes from a revelation that that he had with God. What do I mean by that? Adam and Eve, right, the parents of Cain and Abel, they're walking in fellowship with God. They're living in in a perfect paradise with, with God. But what happens at the moment that they sin against Holy God, that fellowship is broken. And then comes Abel and Cain. And the only way for that fellowship to be restored is through the sacrifice. And that's what Vine is observing here. One of the great scholars of the day, he's observing that, it, that, that it's a re- response because it's a revelation that, that Abel has with, with the Lord that says, hey, I, I want fellowship with you. I want forgiveness from you. And in order to do that, I'm obeying you and presenting an offering that's acceptable to you. Presenting an offering that's acceptable to Creator God. So Cain learned that the Lord had accepted his brother's offering, but rejected his offering. And what do we see? He becomes angry. We see that. He becomes angry, and he was warned. Do you see the grace and mercy of our God? He was warned that his anger was on the verge of escalating into a deeper level of sin. And when his anger conceived, it brought forth murder. First John chapter 3, verse 11 says this, I, I would encourage you to write this reference down, 1 John 3, 11, for this is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. We should love one another. Verse 12, unlike Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother, and why did he murder him? Because his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. They were righteous. And though he was murdered, listen, though he was murdered at the hand of an envious brother, and even, and even though there is not a recorded word, there's not one recorded word from Abel's lip. You can study and search the scriptures, and I encourage you to do that. There's not one recorded word from Abel's lips. It, it's amazing that Abel's faith, Abel's faith still speaks today. His faith still speaks today. Do you see that in in verse 4? Do you see that in verse 4? At the end of verse 4. And even though he is dead, he still speaks through his faith. Some 5,000 years have gone by, and the scholars will debate how many exactly, and, and, and I don't know that we truly know how many exactly, but you just think about this. A long time has passed, and his faith still speaks today. This verb speaks, if, if you dig a little bit, this, ver, this, this verb speaks is an active present tense. And I love that. Again, throughout the centuries, his faith is still speaking. It's still speaking. 
We can look to his life as an example for us and how we're called to be obedient after the Lord, to follow the Lord. Next question to ask is if you have been dead for all of these years, in globe with 5,000, would your faith still speak today? You stop and think about that. That's a long time. That's a life well lived. What a legacy. We talk about legacy and leaving a legacy, right? We talk about that a lot. But all of these years... His life is still leaves a legacy. What a faith. And that's why we come to this place where we understand that obedience condemns disobedience. It's because Abel was obedient in presenting this acceptable offering to the Lord. And Cain was disobedient in presenting uh, his offering to the Lord. And I love, I love the author here in Hebrews 11, 4, that even though he's dead, his life of faith still speaks. Obedience condemns disobedience. Cain's actions did not have the last words. You hear that? Cain's actions do not have the last words. Abel's life of faith speaks long past, speaks long past his death. Abel's life of faith has the last word. Wayne Jackson says this, the fact that Abel's obedience is applauded even centuries after his voice was but an echo from blood-stained soil constitutes subtle evidence that upon death he did not fade into the oblivion of an eternal nothingness as materialist would have one believe. Abel is still speaking. The next question for us is, is are we listening? His life of faith, his example, he's still speaking. Are we listening? And how do we, how how do we really digest this, I guess, is, is the right way? And it would be this, it comes down to obedience. Are we walking in obedience? Are you walking in obedience? As we look at this story unfold, it comes down to, are we walking in obedience or are we walking in disobedience? Abel lived a life of faith and obedience. Cain lived a life of disobedience. He brought a sacrifice that was not acceptable to the Lord. He became furious. The bitterness grew inside of him, turned into anger. And what does he do? Kill his brother. So the question of the day, is are you walking in obedience or are you walking in disobedience? Hebrews 4 is not on the screen, but I would encourage you to write this reference down. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 26. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 26 says this, And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. And my concern is that for many of us, different times in our lives that we allow bitterness and to build into anger and we allow it to control us. And we, we look at Cain and we point fingers at Cain, but the truth is that at any moment, any of us could be a Cain. The further we walk away from the Lord, the more opportunity to become like Cain. That's why it's imperative for the church to walk in obedience, to take time of self-reflection and self-examination and and say, Lord, is there anything in me that is not of you? Remove it. Remove it because I I, I don't want to give, I don't want to give another inch, another, an inch to to the enemy. Verse 27 of Ephesians 4 says, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. Anger gives a foothold to the devil. Cain was consumed in his disobedience. One thing led to another. 
and he murders his brother, walking in disobedience. And again, we point fingers and say, shame on him. But I want us to be aware today that the same enemy that, is a, that was alive thousands of years ago is still alive today. And that same enemy, he's coming for you, he's coming for me each day. He doesn't want us to present sacrifices that are acceptable to the Lord. He doesn't want us walking in obedience. No, no, no. He wants us, he, he wants us living uh, the life uh, following Cain's example, not, not Abel's example. And today I kick back against that and I say, hey, are you surrendered to the Lord? Are you surrendering each day to the Lord? Are you walking in obedience to the Lord? Are you living a life of faith in God? What does it look like? Because the truth is this, if, if you're living with anger, then you're walking in disobedience. If you're living with anger, you're walking with disobedience. And I can't answer for you. Listen, I can't answer this question for you. Only you can answer it. What does your life look like? Not, not what do, do, does the majority of people see, but what happens when you leave groups of people and you step back into your home? What's the real you? Some of us, man, we have really good faces that we can put on, but inside there's something going on that needs to be dealt with. And I would encourage you, before you leave this place today, it needs to be surrendered over to the Lord. Some, there's some bitterness inside. And you say, Lord, rid me of this bitterness. Others would say, man, this bitterness has grown into anger and, and I'm trying to hold it all together, but man, it's about to come out. And, and, and so today, before you leave this place, would you surrender that anger over to the Lord? Say, Lord, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against you. And I want to surrender this anger, this bitterness over to you. I want to walk in obedience. I want to walk in obedience. Would you bow your heads? Would you close your eyes all over this place? I want to give you an opportunity today. This is what we call a response time. This is between you and the Lord. This isn't between you and anyone else. It starts with you. Perhaps there is someone that you need to ask forgiveness of or you need to uh, uh, forgive. <laughs> and that can happen here in just a moment. But would you just take, just, just don't miss this opportunity. Hey, I don't know what's going on in, in, in many of your hearts. But I want you to know that the creator God does. The same God who confronted Cain, who knew what was going on inside of, of his heart, is the same God that knows you and what's going on in your heart. The same God that called Cain to walk in obedience, and even though Cain chose to ignore and reject the word of the Lord, is the same God who's calling you and, and me to walk in obedience. And so would you just be honest all across this place? Would you just be honest before the Lord? If there's anything inside of you any bitterness that's living inside of you, maybe there's the bitterness is already turned into anger. It might not be controlling you. But as we see in, in the word of the Lord, it, it can quickly control you. Would you surrender it over to the Lord right now? Some of you are like, I don't know how to. I don't know how to. Can I just help you? Can I help you right where you're sitting, right where you're at? Between you and the Lord. This is a prayer between your heart and God's heart. Go something like this. Dear Lord, call on the name of the Lord. I don't want to live with this bitterness, this anger any longer. I surrender it over to you. I surrender the person that has hurt me, the situation that has hurt me. I surrender it over to you. I choose this day to walk in obedience. You just continue praying all.
all across this room, whatever's on your heart, if there's something heavy on your heart, would you just share that with the Lord? He, he longs to hear from you. Perhaps there's someone that's hurt you deeply and you need to call that person out by name and say, Lord, you know this person, fill in the blank, has hurt me deeply. But I don't want to live in this place any longer. As you're praying, can I, can I just let you know that the person that's hurt you, they're celebrating right now. You're living in a prison. But you don't have to stay there. You can be set free. So would you release that person that's hurt you? Lord, I want to walk in obedience. Make that your prayer. I want to walk in obedience. Maybe there's someone here that you say you've, you've never surrendered your life over to Jesus. You've never accepted the gift of salvation. I, I, I don't know if that's you. But I want you to know that it can be you. You say, Tim, how could, a, how, could, how could a God love me? You don't know me. And I would say, you don't know my God. He loved you so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to pay the ultimate price for all humanity. And salvation is available today. Only through the person of Jesus. Only through the sacrifice of Jesus. I want you to know that today. And if it's your heart's desire, you're saying, Tim, I want to be saved today. I want to be set free today. I want that relationship with Creator God that you're talking about. I want to experience the peace and, and, and the freedom that comes through relationship with Jesus. Then can I encourage you today? Call upon the name of the Lord. Be saved today. We can do that right now. All across this place. If that's your heart's desire, you're saying, I want to be saved and set free today. I want to walk out of this place with assurance that no matter what happens, no matter what comes against me, I want that confidence that you're speaking about right now. Would you just pray from your heart to God's dear Jesus? I am a sinner. And I need you to forgive me. I've tried to save myself, but I can't. I need you to forgive me. I need you to save me. I need you to set me free. I believe in you. You came, you died, you rose again. I believe in you. Set me free today. I trust in you fully. I trust in you fully. Thank you for saving me. If that's your prayer, that's your heart's desire, just tell God, thank you. Thank you for saving me and setting me free. Thank you for your goodness and your grace in my life. Now I want to walk in obedience. I want to live a life for you, not for me. I live a life that brings you glory not me. So Lord, thank you. We praise you. You're worthy of our lives. These bodies were bought with a high price, the precious blood of Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that we would live a life of obedience and surrender. Lord, that other, others would see us and they would want what we have. And what we have is found in you. And we would point people to you. So we celebrate your faithfulness today. We celebrate your goodness today. We sing these songs of praise to you today.
Church, would you sing along with us? Would you sing along with us? I will rise from the ashes of defeat.